Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon Volt. I'm the Director of Sales here at V Technologies. Uh, I am joined today with uh, by Chris Fletner, uh, who's our Sales Executive for Microsoft uh, Dynamics GP, as well as Scott Mills, who uh, is with our uh, partner at Visible Supply Chain Management, um, who some of you might know and some of you may not know, but they are our partner uh, when it comes to uh, the post office shipping and the rate cards that uh, we currently have inside of Starship. Today's webinar, we're going to focus our uh, attention around how Starship uh, can uh, better serve you over utilizing our ShipGear product, um, but more importantly, on how we could potentially even save you money by taking advantage of the post office uh, services that are offered through Starship, uh, when, especially when it comes to your uh, dimensional weight or other accessorials that carriers such as FedEx or UPS might be charging you today. So I'd like to welcome those of you who are using our ShipGear product. Uh, some of those who might not be using ShipGear and are new to V-Technologies, welcome to you as well. Um, I'm going to go through a couple housekeeping tips here. Um, if you do have questions, we will have enough time at the end of the presentation and demo um, to address those either regarding Starship, the post office. Um, we can address anything you might come to mind. But just type your question in by your name. There's a, a little uh, panel there where you could type in a question and we'll address those um, as we see fit um, throughout the hour. So with that, uh, with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Lettner, who's going to kick it off with a short presentation and a demo following that, and uh, we'll leave it open to questions at the end. Chris, it's all you. Okay, great. Thanks, Simon. Thanks everybody for joining us. Today we're gonna to take a look at Starship and talk a little bit about uh, some reasons to consider possibly migrating over from our ship gear solution. So what really is the difference between the two platforms? Uh, you may be familiar with ship gear now if you're using it or you're on a demo uh, system. Um, with ship gear, it's using the individual carrier platforms. So you have uh, FedEx Ship Manager and UPS world ship uh, with those platforms the integration is uh, for parcels only there's no line item integration and with that uh, there's no plugins for any other third-party applications uh, you're limited to just a single carrier in the user interface that you're working in and uh, there's no batch processing it's a, just a single order process um, so it's very uh, pretty basic for what we offer, kind of the starter model uh, with Starship, it's the next step up and uh, there's a lot more features that you can leverage and take advantage of. Um, with Starship, it uses its own user interface, so it's a single platform for multiple carriers, uh, multiple methods of transportation as well. It does both parcel and freight, um, has uh, the item integration, so with the items we're able to uh, link that to commodity information to help populate your export documentation. Also helps drive um, working with EDI solutions. There's a number of plugins available for popular EDI uh, platforms that are out there. Uh, WMS uh, integration as well. If you need to uh, use a pick and pack scanning type of system, there's a couple of different options to bolt on the Starship there. Uh, rate shopping, you have the visibility to all your different service methods. Um, within the same window, uh, you can do that both um, at the uh, the point that you're taking the order with the browser-based rate quote utility, as well as at the point that you're ready to process the shipment. Uh, there's batch processing capabilities, um, so you have the ability to run a range of orders through uh, Starship from GP. And there's also e-commerce extensions, so you have plugins to a number of popular shopping carts and marketplaces that are available. So a much more robust, full-featured solution with Starship. Uh, some of the reasons to consider switching, we have uh, over 20 different LTL um, options available for uh, common carriers. Um, with that uh, Starship application out of the box, you have access to uh, USPS uh, postal discounts um, that uh, you know, typically an average shipper would not have access to just on their own. Um, the more robust ERP integration with those hooks into item integration, um, also, SQL extension has the ability to plug into other areas uh, of your GP operation if you're using GP's extender tables, um, sales pads, CRM, any other um, applications that uh, maybe live on your network that you need to merge with the core GP integration. Uh, Starship also offers you some additional tools to help 
uh, promote your brand. There's branded labels and documents so you can put your logo on any paperwork that comes out of Starship. Uh, there's uh, the e-notify option, which gives you the ability to customize the look and feel of the, the emails that go out. Uh, you can insert logos and links back into your site there. Uh, you have uh, total control over the color scheme, as well as the ability to include attachments. Uh, there are uh, reporting tools available as well. Uh, so there's uh, crystal reports built into our dashboard with a number of uh, canned reports that can uh, help give you more visibility and insight into your shipping activity. Uh, Starship Social SQL base. So if you're using SmartList or SQL reporting services, you can easily query our SQL views. Uh, Starship can also help automate the carrier rate shopping and service selection. So you can take the decision out of the hands of the operator uh, by applying ship via rules. Starship can uh, take a combination of GP data and uh, fields within Starship and use that to drive the logic on uh, which carrier and service are, are selected based on the price, the transit time, the size, a certain lane, uh, any number of uh, deciding factors. Uh, plugins for EDI and WMS, as I mentioned. Uh, with Starship, you have a centralized uh, server deployment, so it can be hosted in a data center or you can share it out to multiple locations, have a single instance on the server instead of uh, installing it on each of the workstations. So there's full support for uh, terminal server with remote desktop and Citrix. And of course, the line item support uh, in order to help streamline any commodity-based shipping, so any uh, international paperwork that requires uh, commodity information, freight with your NMFC code, freight class, uh, any hazmat shipping uh, to link all of the hazardous profiles to uh, the products. Uh, any any uh, commodity intensive shipping, uh, Starship's really a better fit for than ship gear. This next slide here, you'll see a number of the various carriers that we support. Uh, there's plugins available, like I said, for about 20 different LTL carriers. Uh, there's a number of uh, parcel carriers as well. And uh, that list is always evolving and growing over time. Uh, with the rate shopping, you have the ability to uh, use the browser-based rate quote utility that uh, opens up the rate shopping to anybody in your front office that may need access to that. You want to give a quick uh, estimate to the customer while you have them on the phone. And there's no user licensing for that tool. Uh, with the rate shopping, um, one of the great things that you get with Starship is access to those discounted USPS rates. And you can see here, um, much of the, uh, the additional charges that uh, you'll see increases on, on your UPS or FedEx bill are for uh, all the accessorial fees. So you're not just looking at the base um, freight charges. There's all kinds of additional charges for the delivery area, for residential, rural areas, commercials. These are kind of hidden in the bill. You don't necessarily see that in the, uh, the price initially, but that's uh, where they can kind of gouge you on the prices. You don't have those types of fees with the post office. And you can see here also, you know, some of the additional charges on the FedEx side. No dimensional charges uh, as well. So with UPS and FedEx, uh, a couple of years ago, they switched from uh, charging you just for the base uh, uh, weight of the package itself. Now they're charging you for uh, the length, width, and height, or the dimensions, uh, the amount of cubic space that it takes up in the truck. Uh, you don't have those types of charges with the post office. So let's take a look at uh, an example here. Uh, in this, this particular scenario, you have a teddy bear that uh, you've sold through your shopping cart, and you need to ship that uh, from coast to coast. Uh, the teddy bear with the packaging and any material that you put into the box uh, comes in at 20 ounces. Uh, with that, it's going to be rounded up to two pounds if you ship it with UPS or FedEx. And you can see here the breakdown um, of the, the charges here. Uh, FedEx, you'll end up with uh, $18.04. UPS, going to the same zone, $17.17. If you ship that same package uh, via priority mail to the post office, it's about half the cost. So quite a bit of, of savings there if you're shipping those kind of lightweight but uh, oversized items. I mentioned uh, the email notification. Starship has uh, eNotify where you can do uh, custom uh, email notices. Those can be 
uh, set up with uh, conditions the same as the, any of the printed documents um, to trigger a certain email based on the audience that you're sending it to. Uh, so you can have blind shipments with another company's logo. You have total control over the uh, the branding by inserting graphics. You can change the colors, the formats, links back into your site or cart. Hopefully by uh, sending out the emails to your customer at the point that you're shipping, uh, that'll give you um, the reduction in the number of uh, inbound inquiries coming from your customer as to the status of the shipment. Starship also gives you the dashboard. This is our uh, analytics tool. And it's also available for anyone in the front office that may need access to the Starship history. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Anybody within the organization can have access to that. And also EDI. So Starship can uh, kind of offload some of the uh, more labor intensive practices of going into the EDI uh, system or logging into your trading partners uh, portals in order to generate the 128 labels and the serialized container ID. So you can uh, move that process into the shipping workflow where Starship can print all those documents um, that are required for your trading partners, uh, custom uh, packing list, bills of lading, the uh, 128 compliance labels, those can all be generated and uh, printed out of Starship in the same sequence as uh, the rest of your shipping documents. Um, we have uh, existing uh, plugins for High Jumps True Commerce and Redtail uh, software. We also have um, worked with Datamasons, SPS Commerce, DI Central, and Edisoft in the GP space. And with that, we'll switch it on over to the demo. Let me just get out of PowerPoint quickly. All right, so as I mentioned, Starship is a multi-carrier platform, gives you access to both all of your freight and parcel carriers. So on the freight side, you have the ability to uh, palletize your goods, uh, print out your bill of lading, do rate shopping, and you'll see a different list of various common carriers here. Um, we can also add SCAT codes to Starship if you have the bill of lading module. So for the most part, we can set up pretty much any type of freight inside of Starship with those plugins for the, uh, the 20 or so uh, LTL carriers that we have direct integration to through their web services. On the parcel side, uh, Starship does come with the post office. So you have that built in. Um, you also have modules available for uh, FedEx, UPS, uh, DHL uh, for international. And then we also have some regional carriers like Speedy out in the Midwest and OnTrack on the West Coast. There's also the user-defined option that's available if you want to set up your own local courier service. With GP, using the same sort of workflow as um, with ShipGear where you're uh, using the document ID, so the uh, the order, the invoice number, the quote number, whatever that uh, unique uh, sales transaction ID is, is the key field to go and retrieve the transaction. You can type or scan that in here um, rather than having that floating bar in the middle of the screen that's tethered to the left-hand side of the screen here in Starship. Uh, so you can scan that in off your paperwork. You can also do a look up here by browsing the transactions. Click on the spyglass. It's going to bring up a view of all the pending sales transactions that have quantities available to ship against. And you can also sort through the data here. Uh, you can pick and choose the, uh, the sort fields, whatever columns you want to show up here, the order of appearance, you can eliminate these as well if you want to customize the view. You can also add filters. So if you want to drill down into a subset of data, uh, you can sort by batch ID, customer, PO number, by uh, ship dates, We'll go ahead and pick this first order here. If you've got the barcodes on your paperwork, you can just wand over that with the wedge type scanner. Starship will bring in that sales order and then populate all the information on the Starship user interface. Uh, one big difference you'll see with uh, the Starship solution is down below here, you see all of the product information and we can use that to uh, pack it up. We can use that to help drive the paperwork that needs to be printed. Uh, over on the left-hand side, you'll have a snapshot of the sales transaction that you're working with, so more or less your order header data here. Uh, the company that you're connected to, if you have multiple data sets or different companies in GP, you can toggle between them. Um, 
the uh, sales uh, transaction, the order, the invoice, whatever that unique document ID is that'll show here. Uh, ship method, we can pull that from the uh, order header or the line item in GP. You can set that up as a preference. Uh, the billing preference as well. Uh, so by default, it's prepaid on your dime, but if you want to assign the charges to your customers, uh, third party or collect account, we can flag that from the customer card, from the order header, as well as pull over the accounts uh, that you want to assign the charges to. Time and transit will show up here based on the selected service and the origin and destination. It'll tell you when you can anticipate the product would be delivered by. Below that, you have the sender information. That is the uh, basically the uh, return address or the bill to. Uh, you can trigger that through the integration as well, or you can have multiple addresses set up here if you're doing blind shipments where you're doing fulfillment on behalf of another company, or uh, you have multiple business units within your operation. Uh, you can have the uh, information for the return address uh, toggled based on a mapping coming out of GP. Uh, there's a unique address ID that's assigned to each one of these entities. You can also have default accounts set up with each of the carriers, so you can have multiple sets of accounts if you need to assign those charges to separate buckets. Then you have the recipient information down below here. That is the ship to address. We can also pull that from the order header, from the line item level. And you'll notice a green checkbox here next to the address. Um, with uh, any mode of transport, Starship will um, offer address validation. So with that, we can check the city, state, and zip. We can add the zip plus four postal formatting if you choose. Uh, we can apply any of the standardized postal formatting to make the abbreviations, uh, the street, the suite, the apartment number, and then probably most importantly, the zone where this is going to. So Starship will flag the shipment if it's a residential address, if it's a rural area, uh, a commercial zone. So we'll catch any of the uh, delivery area surcharges um, where you're, you're seeing those additional accessorial fees and uh, that'll be added into the total amount of freight if you're writing that freight back into the GP order or invoice. Now, when it comes time to package things up, uh, Starship has a package database here that can uh, store all of your custom packaging. You have, of course, all of the free packaging that's distributed by the carriers, and then you can add all of your own custom boxes here. Importantly, you can store the dimensions for any of the um, containers that you may ship. So you can give them each a unique name, define the type of container that it is, and then you also have those dimensions. So keep in mind, um, any, any ground shipment now, both UPS and FedEx will factor in dimensions as part of the rate. So in this example here, uh, that I've prepared. We've brought over all the item weights. We've aggregated the unit weight times the quantity of product to arrive at this 29 pounds. Starship also has plugins for uh, many different types of parcel scales. We can also work with CubaScan scales, which can scan the exterior dimensions of your boxes in real time. Based on the size of this container, though, it's packed with 29 pounds worth of goods, but um, the charges that are going to be assessed against that if we send this UPS are going to be based on 52 pounds. So uh, pretty crucial to have that length, width, and height in there. Now, uh, if we're going to ship that post office, you'll see uh, that uh, there are other potentially cheaper options to get it there where you're not paying those additional fees. We're going to go ahead and break this shipment out into two boxes. Maybe that'll help us lower the cost a little bit. Um, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can click on the next arrow here. That'll add a box or over on the right-hand side, you have the add package or delete package icons. You also have the repeat function. That's useful if you have a series of say case packs where you want to enter uh, multiple boxes all at once and copy the weight of the first, or you can just tell Starship, all right, there's five boxes in my shipment rather than going one at a time. If we want to pack uh, material into its own container, we can take those items and we can put them into their own box. With that, that lets us do packing lists. Um, also enhances the ability to uh, work with uh, different trading partners if you need a pick pack ASN. Uh, we can enforce that with business logic around the uh, EDI trading partner as well. We can also push that data back into GP so you have visibility to the contents of each of your packages. So you can tie in the product, the quantity with the tracking information. When I'm all packed up, if I'm ready to go, I have my controls here in the toolbar. 
There's also keyboard shortcuts available, so you can kind of automate that process by uh, creating barcodes that you can scan to emulate the keystrokes. So F5, ship and process, that's an easy way to um, complete your transaction, print your labels, it manifests it with the carrier. At that point, we're gonna push all that data back into GP. Uh, there's also a little hidden secret here. You have ship, process, and create return, or control on F5. Um, if you have those types of shipments that require return labels, um, you can use that function to uh, produce both the outbound label and the return label if you need to have an RMA um, with that product that you're shipping out. Next to that, you have save as draft or control S. That will save the shipment and set it aside. So perhaps you're um, you know, doing like a wave pick where you're, you're producing, you know, a number of packages for a particular item, or you're staging the shipment to be sent out at a later date, you're going to label some product, come back to it. Um, you also have the ability to reserve a future date here on the calendar, so you can assign these uh, shipments to a particular day's manifest, and it'll just show up on that day's paperwork. Uh, you also have all of the order reference fields here. Those are going to come over by default. So your order, your invoice number, um, the customer's PO number as well. Those will show up on any of the paperwork. They'll upload into the carrier's tracking system. So that's a way that you can cross-reference the shipment uh, when you go to track it with uh, the carrier. Uh, department database can be used to record a cost center or a business unit that you're shipping on behalf of. Also allows you to do some sorting on the historical data. Uh, shipping instructions, basically a notes field that can appear on any documents. You can map that over from GP's order header notes, or you can type right here on the notes. Uh, similar to GP's extender tables, you have user-defined fields available all over, except it's just built into Starship. It's not an extra module. Uh, this allows you to uh, create custom fields and assign them to whatever entity you wish for. Uh, you have the uh, shipment level, package and pallet level, items and orders, and you can define uh, you know, whatever use you want to use those for. If you want to designate it for a specific purpose, you can change the label next to each field. Uh, the field uh, contents can be defined as well, what types of data you'll accept there. So that's built in it's in the system preferences. You're not going to run out of any places to capture data anytime soon. Uh, if we're ready to um, process this, and again, come up here in the toolbar, or perhaps we want to take a look at some of the other available shipping methods to us. Uh, if you give the user permission, they have the ability to override the ship method that comes out of GP. You can change the carrier and service level here, or you have access to rate shopping. So you can click on the dollar sign. That's going to call out to all the various carriers that you have access to on your Starship system. And it'll give you a list of options that you can then choose from. And you'll see here, you've got a number of different uh, services that you can pick from. We have it with uh, UPS Ground over here, um, but we have the ability to you know, take a look at all the various services. These will be rated based on the cheapest down to the most expensive. You can also sort by the transit time or alphabetically by the carrier. This will also display both the list price and your negotiated rate. So the contract rate will show up here. Um, Starship also has uh, freight rules that can be configured on top of the basic price. So we can add in handling discounts on top of whatever your cost may be, and we can push both of those values back into GP. So we can see here it came over as UPS ground, but um, we can certainly get it there um, faster and cheaper by sending it with the post office. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick priority mail here. That'll change it here. Uh, Starship also has the ability, if you want to um, update the actual service level back in GP, we have the ability to override the ship method that was used on the, uh, the order itself. So I'll go ahead and process this now. F5 or ship and process. Uh, you can see here uh, the handling fees. Uh, we've marked it up a little bit, so we'll see that back in GP. Uh, Starship has the ability to print out uh, multiple formats of labels and documents. Uh, you have laser uh, and thermal labels that can be produced, um, as well as um, packing lists, uh, reports. You have uh, this hybrid form here that can give you smart labels with both the uh, shipping label and the packing list on the same page. And there's multiple formats of these that can be produced. Any of these documents can be customized and branded with your own logo. Um, any formatting changes that you'd like to add, barcodes, reference fields, uh, fully customizable.
All right, once we've processed our second uh, package here, we're gonna go ahead and take a look back in GP at the results. Uh, so here's some standard write back. There's also some uh, customization that can be done on this as well. But out of the box, Starship's going to give you the ability to um, update the order header notes. And this note can be customized uh, to have as much or as little detail as you'd like to see here. Um, we'll put in a header and footer around our notes so it's not going to wipe out any information that may already be present in GP. And if we do partial shipments against the same sales transaction, we'll keep appending data to that record over time. Uh, you can see here we put back uh, the actual service that was used when it went out when you can anticipate that it's going to get there the number of pieces and weight and then a little breakdown here with the uh, the contents of the packages uh, the batch id that can be used to organize your sales transactions uh, we just created a shipped batch here so starship can tag the batch kind of move it along uh, the, the workflow process that lets the front office know that uh, this order has the tracking, has the freight detail from the shipment. You can go ahead and turn that into an invoice now. Uh, the freight, including the handling fees that we've added in Starship here, will write into the order freight. That can be uh, set up with logic on conditions where you may not want to charge freight. Uh, you want to mark it up. You want to discount it. Um, very uh, customizable. Uh, in terms of uh, the logic that can be added there. User-defined fields here. You can see we've put the tracking information for each of our boxes into the tracking table. We'll continue to append that over time. If it's a partial shipment, on a freight shipment, you'll have the pro number there for your LTL. Um, we've taken the uh, actual cost, so you can see here's our exposure on the freight, and, and this is what we're gonna invoice the customer for. So this can be used to track costs. Any data that you want from Starship can be captured and plugged into user-defined fields. Uh, those are functions that are available there out of the box um, as some custom write-back that you can set up. Uh, beyond any of the user-defined fields, if you max those out, uh, Starship can uh, use the SQL extension that can be used to plug in data into any other platform on your network. So we can use that to get to extension, excuse me, uh, GP's extender tables, sales pads, CRM, shopping carts, um, you know, really any database uh, that's ODBC compliant on your network. Um, we can also update the actual ship method. So we brought this over as UPS ground, but you can see that we changed it to priority mail. So we've gone ahead and tagged that on the right back as well. That's another custom change that you can set up as a preference. Uh, the actual address. You have the ability to take any of the corrected address information and plug that back into GP here as well. So you saw we added the zip plus four on the Starship side, um, but we didn't uh, update these here. I don't have that set up, but uh, you have the ability to plug in any of the address information here. Uh, Starship also has an address correction report, so you can run that over a date range. Then you can take that and go into your CRM database, into your customer card, and make those changes um, on, the, on the master record. We can do that here transactionally. Um, there's also a fulfillment option available for GP, uh, where if you want to let the operator change the quantities of product that are being fulfilled, uh, we can um, move those back onto the order. Let's say um, we had three uh, that we had uh, set aside for this order, uh, but when we went to pick it, there was only two on the shelf. Starship has the ability to take one of those and put it back on the order. And the actual ship date, you can have Starship plug in the actual ship date uh, that it went out here. And again, beyond the out-of-the-box integration with GP, we have that SQL extension, which opens up Starship to read and write to really any other platforms, um, plugins to uh, the Panatrack WMS uh, software to do you know, advanced fulfillment on handhelds, do the pick and pack, and the license plates can come into Starship, and you can bring in a, a completely uh, packed shipment um, off of the WMS, um, the EDI plugins, as well as e-commerce, so we can plug into a number of different marketplaces. We can bring in the, uh, say, the Amazon order ID out of GP, link that to the order inside of Starship. We can hit the Amazon API to update the cart status with the tracking and the freight and the detail. 
at the same time that we're pushing the detail back into GP. So quite a few more options uh, for processing uh, shipments in Starship, as well as all those additional hooks into the other external platforms that we can update. A couple other utilities I just wanted to touch on quickly here uh, before we uh, wrap it up. Uh, with the Starship license, you also have uh, some browser-based utilities that you get. Um, you have the rate quote utility. This gives you the ability to do uh, rate quotes from um, within the uh, GP uh, order environment. You also have um, an API available. We have uh, an API that can be called from really any platform, shopping carts, CRM, order entry. Uh, there are existing hooks available um, between the Blue Moon Freight, Freight Matrix uh, product, so you can keep the user on the GP screen and call our API if you don't want to deal with our screens at all. Um, so you get this with the license, really, that could be available for anybody in the organization that needs access to the rates. You also have um, access to the email notification. Um, with eNotify, you can set up uh, templates here for custom emails. Uh, of course, we have the ability to send out emails uh, using the carrier systems, um, but uh, they really have no control over the, the formatting or the timing of when those emails go out. This is set up through your own SMTP server. So you have some basic templates here for uh, shipping freight and parcel, but you have total control over the, uh, the formatting of these emails. Uh, you can add logos, graphics, um, change the colors, insert links, so you can send traffic back into your shopping cart or your website. Um, you have the ability to send attachments as well. Uh, so with that, uh, we can grab files like a catalog, a warranty, any promo material that you want to insert um, with the email notifications, or we can dynamically pull documents out of the Starship shipment. So a copy of a packing list, a bill of lading, export documentation, any of that information can be inserted into the ship notifications that go out, and uh, copies of those can go to your customer directly. Uh, you also have control over the timing. Uh, so those can go out real time. So as you're processing shipments throughout the day, you can be notifying your customer uh, or you can have those uh, tied to a process. Uh, so within Starship, maybe when you post your shipments or you have a certain time of day when you want to uh, send off that batch of records, you can also set it up to be manually uh, sent out. So we can queue up all the emails, send those to a folder, and then the operator can go in and release those at any point in time. You also have conditions here where you can assign the email based on the audience that you're sending it to. So you can have multiple formats of the emails and then trigger that with conditions uh, based on who you want to see this information. So hopefully if you're proactively notifying your customers of the status of the shipment, uh, when it goes out, it'll have a link there where they can track it themselves. Um, that cuts down on the number of customer service inquiries you're receiving. Of course, you have all the information at your fingertips back in GP. We also give you another front office tool here with our dashboard where you can get at all of the shipping history. Um, you can do searches here using all the same sort of GP data that uh, you would do lookups with um, within GP itself. So your uh, customer's ID, the order, the invoice number, customer's PO number, any of the address fields, any of those can be searched on and uh, queried in order to find the record that you're looking for. Once you find that shipment, you'll have access to all the order header information here. Uh, you'll be able to track it from Starship. A copy of the email will be here. Then you have um, all the tracking information down below per container. You'll have a list of all the products and quantities that have shipped, a breakdown of the freight charges, including any kind of um, accessorials or markups and then any special shipment options that were used. Uh, so COD, insurance, inside delivery, lift gate, any of those types of things where you'll see additional charges, you'll be able to flag that here. Uh, you have some additional sorts available as well uh, that are built into the dashboard. Uh, you can check it out by carrier, location, uh, mode of transport, status, uh, by user. So each individual operator on the system can have a unique login and you can track their activity on the system so you can pinpoint exactly who did what and then also your top five customers. Starship has um, a canned uh, list of reports that are available. Uh, we use crystal reports in our dashboard. Uh, there are also SQL views that are exposed. So if you're using SmartList or 
SQL reporting services, you can easily query our data and extract what you need uh, from the database in real time. Uh, just one other feature I wanted to highlight here quick. Uh, go back to the client. Um, so of course, you know, we have the reports, you have the ability to do some data mining by going at the tables directly. Uh, Star Starship also has a um, export routine, so we can push data out to a file silently in the background. Um, this is useful if you want to populate any other platforms or you have uh, spreadsheets or reports that you want to create. Uh, Starship can do this automatically, so you set it up here to post that data out to a file. So we'll just pick a folder here. And this gives you access to um, any types of shipments here, different statuses. We'll go ahead and pick a number of carriers. And you have access to all your Starship data here. So this is a quick and easy way to get information out of the system. And we'll pick some fields. And then you can change the sequence here. So this is useful if you have other platforms that you need to uh, expose the Starship data to. A quick and easy way to get the raw data right out of Starship. Of course, you can always go back and uh, pull that out through SQL as well. All right, and that's all the uh, options that I had prepared to show on today.